and they're off here. And the talk here about this race is that it is going to be going out at 72 seconds per lap, which is 30 flat pace. And it's set up for Alicia Monson, who has had a fantastic indoor season, set the American record in the 3,000 meters at Milrose, running 825. There was a time when breaking 15 or running 15 was a big barrier. I mean, it still is a big barrier for athletes, and she's looking to do it twice in a row. So um, I loved Des, Des Linden's pre-race kind of review. And, you know, she essentially said the only person that can beat Monson is Monson. So our expectation for tonight is that she's who we'll be seeing um, at the front for this race. And we're hoping that she does all the things she's dreaming of because it would be really exciting to watch. And we'll see, too. We'll see who else is in this race who could step up and, and do something special because we've seen in the past that if things don't always go according to plan. And there could be some somebody in this field who could have a fantastic debut or a major drop. Like Dom Scott cut 19 seconds off of her time last year. Two years ago when Eilish McColgan ran here, it was her first time under 31. She ran 30-50, and you can see her in, in the fourth position there behind Eleanor Fulton up front. And that's Josette Andrews, who is Alicia Monson's new teammate, setting the pace as well. And Monson tucked in there in that third position. Also, that year, that year two years ago, that uh, uh, Eilish McColgan ran 30.58, Elise Cranny had never run a 10,000 meters, and she beat Carissa, Carissa Schweitzer, her teammate, who was an excellent 10,000 meter runner, in 30.47, and that was the third fastest, third fastest 10,000 meters ever run by an American woman. So, strange things can happen here at J. Sarah. Strange and special things. You know, especially as an athlete develops, right? A 10K is largely aerobic strength. And, you know, some of these younger athletes need a little bit of time to build up that, um, that you know, the mileage to build up their um, ability to handle the pace, their aerobic capacity. Um, but then once they get there, you see these, they just start, you know, carving away from their PBs with big chunks at a time. Um, Right now, though, this race is playing out as I probably would have expected it to play out at the start with Monson and uh, McCoglin right to the right behind the Pacers. Yeah, this looks less like a race at the moment, more like an assault, <laughs> an assault on a on a record. Uh, 71 seconds for the first lap, and they crossed 800 meters in 73. So that was just the the first kilometer, about 259. So on very good pace, being set by Eleanor Fulton. Right on the pace that they have been talking about for that 30 minute barrier. 301 would be 3013 pace, which is the American record held by Molly Huddle. You know, it's interesting too, when you look at this, the, the two front runners in this race, you have Monson who broke the American record indoors in the 3K. Um, on finishing off her indoor season with this outdoor race. And on the flip side, you have McCoglin, who is kicking off her season as she preps for the London Marathon in about s seven weeks from now. I think I read also that she's planning to do the New York half um, between now and then. McCoglin has been in Colorado doing altitude training uh, in preparation for her races ahead. But all of the athletes that have been at altitude flag and Colorado primarily have been dealing with one of the harder winters in a while, or at least harder winters in our recent memory. Uh, lots of snow, lots of indoor treadmill runs, lots of grind. But I think that's fitting for a 10K runner. They, they seem to have to be wired to handle that, I guess. So why not throw some other, some other factors at them? It hardens them, yeah. for sure. <laughs> that is true. The third lap was hit in 71 seconds. So we went 71, 73, 71 and 72s are the target, so they're, they're circling that right now. A good job being done by Eleanor Fulton here. Monson tucked in there nicely, and McColgan, who is no slouch at the shorter distances too, that looked like a 449 through 1600 meters, so 72 second pace, that was a 73. McColgan 
the British national record holder in the 5,000 meters, 1428. So she has a fantastic range here. She moves up to the marathon. You know, comes from a running family. Her mother, she had a just phenomenal season last year going on uh, to win the Commonwealth's 10K, followed up by a silver in the Commonwealth's 5K at home in Scotland. Uh, the same, the 10K, Commonwealth 10K, the same race her mother had won, and some really great videos of kind of the side by side of each of them winning their respective uh, years of that championship. Um, but, you know, definitely comes from a running family, uh, is in a relationship with a runner as well, so lives, breathes, uh, bleeds running. And we'll say we went to split screen here, and the second pack is being led by the Puma Racing Elite. Sarah Inglis is up there, and Taylor Werner are pacing their teammates, Natasha Rogers and Fiona O'Keefe. So Natasha Rogers, we'll see what she can do too in this race. Uh, this second pack is targeting 3040, which is that Olympic standard as well as world championship standard for this year, which is amazing to think about that 3040 is something that a pack of, of women are going for on U.S. soil here. Absolutely. And it, and it is attainable, too. <laughs> We've talked to uh, Puma Racing Elite yesterday, and uh, Fiona O'Keefe is in stellar shape right now. They think that, that she has a bright future in the marathon as well. Not just yet. But uh, we saw a significant drop last year with her in the 5,000. She ran 15.05 at, at the Portland Track Festival and then 15.01 indoors in Boston too. But she's also run 67 for the half last year in Houston. So you bookend the, the 10,000 here and she hasn't run one in a while. She's about due for a, a, a pretty good one. I think 32.12 off the top of my head was her, her best, but that could be going down. I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, PBs next to people's names by the end of tonight. The front pack here uh, went through 2K in 602, so that was a, they're running 62 high, and then 2,400 meters in 73, or yeah, 715, 73 second lap there. And it- Slowed a little, mostly though, just a cum cumulative time of the points of the seconds that's um, taking them from the 712, which would be their kind of uh, split for that 30, breaking 30 um, versus the 7.15 that they hit. And Fulton stepping off here at 2,600 meters. So now it is Josette Andrews up front, the newest member of the On Athletics Club, leading her teammate, Alicia Monson, and then Eilish McColgan behind Alicia. And Dathan, you could see him in the corner there, gave a quick split, and now I bet he's running to the opposite end of the track. <laughs> trying to see trying to see his athletes 50 times during this race, I think. <laughs> I think so. Trying to get in his mileage, too. <laughs> yeah. 2,800 meters there, seven laps down. And that was a 72-6. Andrew's keeping the pace rolling here. When McCoglin talked about coming to this race, she said, you know, it was a last minute decision to test her legs over the 10,000 here at Sound Running. She had set a huge B PB here two years ago, so she was looking forward to spinning these marathon legs after a solid five weeks of altitude training in Colorado. So it's, you know, pretty cool to see, sh knowing this was gearing up to be a big race, deciding mid-marathon training mid marathon lead up to come down and put herself right up behind monson um who's you know coming off being a very sharp strong indoor season and i love seeing that that kind of meeting of athletes at different points in their season at different you know, who have different strengths seeing what comes of it and it is it is impressive here seeing what she's doing and what they're both doing this is 3200 meters eight laps down Another, it was 941 there. So just over 450 pace for 1600 meters. That was a 72.8. And the fans think 
right now that Licia Munson is the overwhelming favorite. She has 311 first place votes. But uh, Eilish McColgan appears to be in second with 71 first place votes. And then I believe it could be Natasha Rogers after that. That's what the fans think. It is. And you can see there on the screen. You can also see Susanna Sullivan with, is that 11? Are these the first place votes? Yep. Susanna Sullivan with 11 of those. So the if you pick, for those participating in the in the Pick'em game, if you pick the top five, well, the best scorecard picking top five for men's and women's races, uh, best combined score wins a pair of on shoes. Your choice. So good luck to everybody out there. <laughs> but this is Josette Andrews up front here, and you got a good glimpse of this second pack too on the other screen. So that's Natasha Rogers uh, jumping out front and her teammate Fiona O'Keefe behind her. Ellie Hennis behind her is running her first 10,000 since college. So she's due for a good one and Dom Scott too. And I think that's Sarah Inglis that just jumped off the track, but I, I believe she was pacing anyway. So they've passed 3,600 meters now, and that was 72 low. So next next mark that we're coming up to is 4,000 meters, and that'll be 200 meters, from, a little less than that from now. But uh, we're going to bring in Colleen, see what she's thinking uh, trackside right now. Hey, guys. Coming at you from the finish line, start finish again. Um, thoughts here are obviously the top two women. No surprise, this is exactly who we thought, you know, was going to go with the pace here. Um, but both these women look super good, just super strong, uh, relaxed, just looking at their faces. Their faces look really relaxed, and they're just focused um, on the pacer here and just um, hanging in there. So it's exciting to see. I know we're a little bit early, but there's a huge gap. And then we have this awesome pace group. There's a lot of solid runners in here. Um, honestly, Ellie Hennis looks really good, and Dominique Scott is, was in this race last year uh, and looks really good too. So, and we got a couple of Puma athletes. The chase group is no joke. So, I like what I'm seeing. And we're looking at the race now. They came through 4K in 12.05, another 72 second lap. And the chase pack came through 4K in 12.24, so that puts them... They're a little off of that uh, standard. 12.16 would be the 30.40 mark that we're talking about. Um, but as we keep seeing, that last K, can there, you can make up a lot of time, so they should be in a good spot. And this second pack here is, uh, like we said, pretty interesting. So we've got... We've got uh, Natasha Rogers driving the train, and then her teammate Fiona O'Keefe, Ellie Hennis, Dom Scott, Wu Ga Hei, and then Laura Galvan. And Hei in here, the Chinese athlete, coached by James Lee, she ran a great race last year at Stanford. She ran 31.46, and Lee thought that she had a lot more in the tank, but it was too close to this race to be able to jump into it. But they couldn't let up this opportunity. And it looks like Laura Galvan has moved past her I would keep your eye on Galvan too. She's one to stick her nose in it and really drive the train when, when the going gets tough. She's got three Mexican national records, the 15, the 3K, and the 5K. And she's coming into this race 19 seconds off of the Mexican national record for the 10K. So look for her to do something. She was Pan Am Gold in 2019, um, and she had a big PB indoors of 8.40 in the 3K. Uh, she, she trains in Guanajuato and was in Bathurst at the World Cross Country Championships uh, where she placed 26th. So she's had a strong season, um, you know, has some races under her belt and uh, should, should be going to this race a good, with a good sense of her fitness. Yeah, 26, nothing to sneeze at down there. But we're coming in 4,800 meters. That was a 73. So uh, Andrews is clicking off 73s for the last couple laps as we round this bend and we're going to head into 5,000 meters as we get to the 200 meter mark. So you see that clock right now. It is approaching 15 minutes and we still have Monson 
and McColgan there sitting on Andrews, and Andrews still pushing here. This is a this is a great 5,000 for Andrews too. She's gone under 15 <laughs> before, but 1508. So 1508. That's last year we saw Cranny come through in 1504 for 5,000 meters, and then uh, and then moved to 1510 for the second all alone. Andrews steps off. And now this is all Munson and McColgan. And I don't think Munson is even thinking about relinquishing the lead at this point. She's perfectly fine driving this thing, and she knows how to do it. So she, she, she keeps getting more and more comfortable in this position as she moves through her career. Yeah, you know, first I have to say, I have to give major props to Josette Andrews because to pace for 5K right around 15 minutes, that, you know, to pace these big races, these big attempts at times, takes an athlete equally talented. I mean, she's a sub four minute, 1500 meter runner herself. Um, and she took this group through 5K um, right around that 15 minute mark. Monson, as you mentioned, you know, she, after her setting her American record indoors in her post-race interview, she said, I tried to go hard and break everyone behind me. That has been her mindset in every race I've watched her in. Ever since, you know, that cross country, um, U.S. Cross Country Championships in January of last year where she got out to the front in that course and never relinquished the lead. Led gun to tape and just grind, it just was a grind, grinding it out. Um, I think she likes to be in the front. I think she likes the challenge. She says she's done these paces in practice so she knows what to expect. And now it's her turn with 5K remaining to, uh, to grind it out some more. This is her strength. This is yes. her, her talent. And she, her strength is her strength. And and she knows it better than anybody, and she's coached by the man who also knows it better than anybody, Dathan Ritzenhain. The second pack here went through 5K in about 1528 to 1529, so they're under 31, um, 31 minute pace for 10,000 meters, and we'll see what they can do to get some of that, that, uh, that change back if they can. Dom Scott ran 31 flat here last year. The South African national record is 3052, so She's got her sights set on that as well. And she and Laura Galvan are in great positions, like tagged on to that chase pack. You know, Roger's doing the the work to push the pace. And actually, as I say that though, her teammate, Fiona O'Keefe coming up, I have to imagine they maybe have a strategy of how to share the lead and try to execute collectively as teammates. They were in, uh, for a bit in Kenya for altitude training and um, and then I believe also in Colorado, so they've gotten in some good altitude work. As we were saying before, their team is based in Raleigh, North Carolina, being coached by Alistair Cragg, who is quite the accomplished athlete himself. So it's cool to see these um, teams being led by really established and accomplished athletes so that they can then translate what what they were able to do and learn through their successful career and give that wisdom to their athletes they coach. And Amy Craig out there too, so they've got that the guidance from her as well. That's true. Um, Munson here, pushing it down back to 72 second pace. So the previous two laps, 72-1 and 72-3, and she's just foot on the gas right now. All gas, no brakes in this 10,000 meters. And I, you can see some lead changes on the right-hand side again as, as Natasha Rogers moves to the front of that pack. And Fiona O'Keefe is back in second there. Fiona O'Keefe, a Davis senior Blue Devil, Davis High School, Northern California. Shout out to the Blue Devils. And a, a Stanford Go alum Duke. as well. <laughs> yeah. Got a little Duke. I don't know where they got that name. I couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> So they're, they're going uh, 74 to 75 pace in that second pack. And Hennis is hanging in there, like Colleen said, looking good uh, running this professional debut in the 10,000 meters. What a way to break into your first 10K at an event like this. Uh, early season, but such energy and such kind of, you know, I think about some of these races you go to, like Monaco Diamond League, for example. People. It now, because of the kind of legendary status it holds, people plan their seasons around it and they plan to run there. And almost the, the myth, the mystique of that place helps them get more out of themselves because they believe it is possible. We're only three years into this sound running, the 10, but 
athletes are showing up believing it is possible and you get these just such incredible performances when there is that belief and that kind of planning for it. So Natasha Rogers brings them through in a 73 high through that lap. Munson still at the front in a 72.5. That was through 6,400 meters there. But Munson and, and McColgan here have come onto the home straight and they're approaching 6,800 meters. They're, that's 17 laps. So they'll have eight laps to go when they cross here. That's two miles. And their split, we'll see it populate in a second, 72.2. And McColgan is still hanging on. McColgan is, I mean, her best is 3019. So she has been in this territory before where Munson has not. And she knows what this feels like. Munson is, is getting into uncharted waters at this pace, but from what we've seen, she looks extremely capable of, of keeping it together here. And she's had success in cross and you know, while the distance may not have been 10K, the grind of a cross country race and the kind of fitness that you need to have, plus training at altitude, being in Boulder and being, um, you know, just very aerobically strong and thriving in a situation like this where, you know, it's not, ugh, this person is sitting on me. It's, ugh, I'm gonna break this person or at least that being a goal. Um, and, you know, we can't forget, when she, as we said before, when she made the Olympic team a couple years ago, to compete in Tokyo. It was in that brutal hot 10K in Eugene, in, uh, in Eugene that she got heat exhaustion from and like, you know, nearly toppled over in the post-race interview. Um, but she is just tough and will go as deep as she needs to and possibly can for success. And she's digging deeper and deeper right now. 71.8 for that lap. <laughs> and McColgan hanging right there too. Flipping her heels a little bit because she ran a little faster for that lap. <laughs> But now we have Ellie Hennis driving the train for that second pack with Fiona O'Keefe and Natasha Rogers and Laura Galvan hanging on in that fourth place position. We'll see what they run as they come through here. But they're about, they're about 30 seconds, a little over 30 seconds behind uh, Munson and McColgan here. And I believe both Hennis and Fiona O'Keefe's PRs in this event is 32-12 from their college days, so they're about to see a significant drop. But Munson still round and round here, coming back onto the home stretch again, and she's cruising in. This will be 7,600 meters, 19 laps, and it's Munson and McColgan, like a detective duo and a crime show. But we have to remember, Munson said she tries to go hard and break everyone behind her. And she went through the 5K mark. Um, we don't have the exact 5K split here, but it was just slightly over 15 flat. And since she took the lead when Josette uh, Andrews stepped off, it's been, uh, excuse me, she has hit 72, 72, 72, 71, 71, um, just that last one was technically 71.99. When you're aiming for a 72 flat, you're pretty much dialed in. And so when she says she's been in training and she knows what the pace feels like, she wasn't lying. <laughs> she, she was not. And that was Rogers back at the front. Oh, yeah. oh it's O'Keefe at the front. 74.5 for that lap. But yeah, Munson still knocking down 71s here digging deeper and deeper as she comes up again this is 8k so we'll see what this split is and what the 8k time is for munson and mccolgan and remember this is the working end of the race for these 10kers it is this is yeah 24 10 through through 8,000 meters think about that think about the college races for men out there and how 24 10 is a is a very good time Yes. 72 0 for that lap. As the, we start to, we're starting to get a little bit of a drizzle, very, very light, nice mist, misty feeling in the, uh, in this, in this, uh, J. Sarah High School. That's right. We're getting some coastal mist here. So the, hopefully our, our computers hold up sitting <laughs> out here. Uh, but the track is on fire and we see 
Laura Galvan is now losing touch with that group of three. Natasha Rogers is up front. Oh no, that is O'Keefe and then Rogers, sorry. And Ellie Hennis. So here comes Munson again with McColgan. And it is it is Munson and McColgan. There has there has been no change in that order yet. 71-3 on that lap. 71-2, excuse me. 71-2 for both of them. And I don't know if the, uh, if the experts anticipated this close of a race this late, but I know some fans did, as many of them picked McColgan to win this race, and we'll see what happens as we get further and further. Phenomenal when you think that Alicia Monson's uh, PR in the 10K is 30.51, and she towed the line with the goal of running sub 30. I love that, though. I love this desire to just set the big goals for herself. You know, she said when she talked about going sub 30, she thinks about Americans being competitive on the world stage, even if every championship race isn't a record-breaking race. You have to be ready for that, and this is her showing how she is going to be ready that if the, the opportunity shows itself, she intends to be as fit as the best in the world to go after those medals. The on team has said, you know, getting through the indoor season and then all of the focus is on trying to medal at that world championships this year in, in Budapest. In 8,800 meters, 71.9, so she keep, keeps, keeps clicking off sub 72s. And now it is Hennis up to the front in the chase pack with Fiona O'Keefe and Natasha Rogers there. So they keep circulating and doing work and, and pushing each other there. And they're running 74 to 73 pace as they come up to 8,800 meters right now. So we've got a good, a, a good distance between the top two and that second pack to where we keep getting splits rolling through here. But the race is really moving right now as it's still Munson and McColgan here as they're swinging back onto the home stretch. You can see Coach Dathan Ritzenheim there getting his, I, I would love to see how much he's running out there today. But Munson coming in, they're attached at the hip right now. There is no distance in between the two of them as they come up to 9,200 meters. This is two laps to go, 800 meters to go in this 10,000 meter race here at San Juan Capistrano. That is a 71.6 for Munson, and at 9,200 meters, 27.45. So this is, <laughs> this is shaping up to be something very special, because we saw 15.08 at halfway, and then splits have just been straight 71 since then. Yep, just looking, both looking so strong. I mean, of course they're working hard, but the cadence has not, altered in fact as you said it's just been getting quicker and now yeah we see Hennis come up to 9200 meters so that second pack has has two laps to go now but it is still Munson and McColgan there is nothing to say here other than Munson and McColgan 71 Munson McColgan 71 Munson McColgan 71 <laughs> and they're coming up to the bell lap or sorry yeah they're coming up to the bell lap right now you can hear it ringing Munson and McColgan, under 400 meters remaining in this amazing 10,000 meter race here at San Juan Capistrano. That was a 70-45. And now McColgan is looking to make something happen because what other opportunity do you have to do so? There is no time left. This is it. Anything that's going to happen is going to happen in the next 300 meters. And we're seeing it now as McColgan goes to the front and ducks her head down, down that back stretch, putting distance on Munson. Deep in marathon training, getting ready for London. Last minute, 30, decides to come to this race, and here she is about to win it with a huge PB. Going to the arms, Munson has done all of the work since Josette Andrews stepped off at 5,000 meters, and the rain is coming down now here in San Juan Capistrano, but here comes Eilish McColgan. The it was 30-19. The British national record is 30-01.
Can she get it here tonight? Let's see. Oh. It looks like she may have broken Paula Radcliffe's British record. Did she do it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> she has yeah. 30 flat 87 new national oh. record. Eilish McColgan, new national record. Also for Alicia Bonson, 30.03, taking 10 seconds off of the American record here at the 10. And the rain is coming down and we're getting soaked. <laughs> but here we go, this is the race for third. This is Natasha Rogers fighting with Ellie Hennis, who previous to this time has not been a force in 10,000 meter running on the scene. She's a new pro last year. And who's gonna take it? It is Ellie Hennis beating Natasha Rogers, the Team USA world member last year. Hennis in third, 30-48. Look at these times, Rogers in fourth, 30-48. O'Keefe, 30-55. What is going on? <laughs> McCoglin gets the record, almost breaks 30 in marathon build. I mean, what a night for her. This, we've seen something extremely special here tonight. 30 flat, oh. And 30.03 for <laughs> Monson. I mean, both of them just nearly under that 30 minute mark, both blasting apart uh, their, their national records. 